Good day everybody and uh, welcome back to DX Explorer for one more video. So thanks to my friend Hendrik who sent me the PCB board and also an additional one. Um, this is a receiver based on a design by Charles Kitchen. Uh, it's a very very well known schematic. Uh, I've seen it online, uh, many people built it. And um, this is the, I think, I believe it's a preamplifier for the frequency display. I'm gonna have to ask Hendrik about this one. I don't know the details yet, but I can attach it to the receiver and probably I'm gonna add the frequency display later on. Um, the only thing that I wanted to talk about is that uh, I've been canceling building this one for a long time uh, because I didn't have the um, MPF 102s or G310 uh, transistors. Um, my friend Nigel from New Zealand, he sent me a bunch of MPF 102s uh, last year, but uh, and he also sent me variable capacitors that I ended up using in some other projects. So I'm gonna have to find uh, two different ones to use in this one, and this is one of the reasons why I've been canceling building this receiver, is because he's using two variable capacitors and they're quite hard to find here in Romania at this point. So anyway. I'm gonna build it really quick um, and I'm gonna go over and explain you um, everything at the end just because I don't want to waste time and uh, I'm not gonna film uh, today the way I'm building it just because I don't have the time and I have to move fast and it's quite hard to do that uh, in camera so I'm gonna finish it and then I'm gonna explain everything and uh, also uh, put a schematic on the screen and uh, yeah we'll see how we can test it one thing that I have missing is the Zener diode 6.8 volts. I don't have that one, so probably I'm gonna have to uh, see tomorrow in the city if I can find one. If not, I'll just have to improvise. But for now, let me build it really quick and I'll be right back. All right, so um, I'm back with the receiver finished. I had to wait nearly a week and a half to, to get the parts but uh, I've also got some extra parts because I want to build uh, the initial version of the Sputnik that I wanted to build at the beginning before I built this one. <coughs> I wanted a very tiny version, a portable one with a smaller case and no speaker uh, that uh, will not take so much power, uh, battery power, when portable and uh, I also wanted a bandpass filter for that one uh, to get rid of any AM broadcast band interferences. Let me put the volume lower on this one. So yeah, um, I've built <laughs> I built this one thanks to my buddy Hendrik. Um, um, basically, as I was saying, it's a Charles Kitchen design. Um, and uh, in the region stage, it has uh, an MPF-102, a JFET. And um, before I started building, no, actually, while I was building the Sputnik and I was trying to improve it, a lot of people told me why I haven't used the version with a JFET, because it's more uh, sensitive. And, um, well, I was very curious to build this receiver because I wanted to know how much sensitive it is comparing to, to this one. And honestly right now, after about 6 hours of playing with both of them, I have to admit that I'm a happy guy. Uh, <laughs> the sensitivity doesn't seem to be uh, that much uh, different. Um, this one, it's a little bit more sensitive than the Sputnik, but... Uh, I'm um, basically it's overloading with signals so it's a disadvantage at the end and I have to pull back the antenna um, the RF attenuator just to get uh, the sound levels to um, to a proper level that uh, the modulation sounds good too it's great for for AM broadcast stations uh, no doubt uh, about that but uh, yeah for just for ham radio um, I honestly don't uh, see uh, such a big difference comparing to uh, the Sputnik, so I'm happy. Um, but <laughs> I was really curious about this one. 
probably um, with a little bit of tweaking I might be able to get a really nice receiver with a JFET um, combining the Charles Kitchen design with a couple of parts from the Sputnik which also the preamplifier is identical because I borrowed uh, the pream uh, RF preamplifier from the Sputnik from this design um, also but yeah anyway I'm really excited I'm gonna make a comparison I'm recording the the Charles Kitchen design on uh, Tascam sound recorder and I'm going to cut the microphone and uh, plug in the microphone the sound uh, to the camera uh, straight into the Sputnik so this way I can uh, jump uh, back and forward between one and the other so you'll see you'll hear the difference and then we're going to play around a little bit with this one and I'm going to talk a little bit more um, about this receiver really really quick Alright, so uh, now we're back just on this one. Um, just a few words, um, really quick, because I don't want to get this video very long. Um, the design is really simple. This particular uh, part doesn't include the audio amplifier, so bear in mind, this is bare audio. Uh, going straight into the Tascam audio recorder the one from the Sputnik was filtered because the audio amplifier has a little filter in it but uh, yeah I'm really happy it sounds really nice and uh, I'm still trying to decide to keep it for two bands basically I wanted to cover uh, from 3.5 megahertz up to 7.2 but I'm thinking that it's hard to tune it's already hard to tune right now and it's only covering from I'm not sure exactly 5 megahertz up to 7 point something and this is a multi-turn and it's pretty hard to tune like this And especially for the amateur radio bands, it's quite hard. I mean, you can play around with the fine tuning, but still, I might keep it for one band. Um, maybe I'm going to build it for the 3.5 megahertz or maybe 40 meters band. Who knows? We'll see. I'll, I'll try to to think about it. Um, but my idea was to remove the main variable capacitor, modify the fine tuning circuit, add the multi turn potentiometer, and transform it in uh, main tuning. This way, I can keep the board ve very simple and probably build another circuit, uh, also diode tuning, uh, f 
for the region control and this way I can keep it in a very compact in a small box because it's too much space with a bunch of variable capacitors and I don't have variable capacitors I keep reusing the same <laughs> the same variable capacitors in all my my circuits um, yeah so we'll see what I'm going to do I'm gonna come back with another video on this one definitely I'm gonna come back with another one uh, I'm gonna build um, um, the frequency um, preamplifier as well uh, the frequency counter preamplifier and uh, whatever it's needed to finish it build a nice enclosure a nice enclosure for it but anyway I'm very happy it works really nice it's a little bit yeah touchy but <laughs> definitely tonight I'm going to have a lot of fun playing with this one I'm happy there's uh, some propagation I'm a little bit sad that it's not uh, way more sensitive than the Sputnik I mean it's basically uh, before I changed the design of the Sputnik uh, this one was uh, having the same issue uh, it was getting overloaded with the with, uh, signal so I had to um, do a couple of modifications to attenuate the signal before the RF attenuator, I mean after, uh, even after the RF attenuator just because it was uh, too much signal going in and it was distorted and uh, basically it's too much sensitivity and you don't have any sel selectivity and this one has the same issue so honestly I don't think if you if you want to build different designs uh, if you build one with a regular NPN transistor or a JFET, I don't see the difference. Maybe this one is a little bit more quiet. Uh, it doesn't seem to have so much background noise comparing to, to an NPN transistor. But other than that, I honestly don't see any difference. Um, yeah, so this one as well, I have to, to pull back the, the RF attenuator just to attenuate the signals. I'm going to show you an example now with this CW signal. So if I put the signal all the way up. This is how it sounds. It's way, way, way um, overloaded with signal. So I have to pull back. Yeah. I had the same issue with the Sputnik at first. Um, yeah, so some uh, old man told me once uh, when I started learning about receivers that I have to pick uh, between sensitivity or selectivity with the region receiver. I cannot have both. And it's true. But uh, this is great for the M broadcast. Well, this one too, but it's not designed for that. Uh, it's great for the AM broadcast band um, as well, for the broadcast stations, if I can find them. Let me see here. This reminds me of my childhood. We used to search for exotic uh, radio stations when I was a kid, and it was quite exciting to receive them. Very nice. a little bit too much wow a lot of Chinese stations
And we're back on the 40 meters band. I still have to get used to uh, playing around with the controls. I'm used with the Sputnik because usually I set the region control in, in one position and then I, I never touch it. Uh, it's nearly like a direct conversion receiver. I just play around with the tuning, um, RF attenuator and the volume control. Uh, this one I seem to uh, need to change the the regeneration control most of the time but yeah anyway very fun project to build thank you Hendrik so much uh, thanks everybody for watching I promise I'm gonna come back with a finished design I'm gonna still decide on uh, what exactly I want to do with it um, I'm happy it works I'm happy is not such a big difference between a JFET and the 2N2222 that I'm using in the Spudic region receiver. This one seems to be more quiet, um, but yeah. Um, I took a, a stone um, <laughs> away from my heart because I've always wanted to build this one. I found a couple of notes um, a couple of days ago. Uh, from when I was a kid and I, I wanted to build this one and I remember I tried building one of these and um, Because I couldn't measure the variable capacitors and uh, I Don't think I had a proper JFET I, I used a different one and probably it was not the right one, but it never worked and I also I, I always uh, stay away from from this schematic after that um but yeah, and now that I have more knowledge, I think I can play around with uh, with a few changes and I can remove the variable capacitors out of the circuit and uh, keep the design a lot more compact and uh, build an interesting receiver. So yeah, I'm gonna come back also with a blog article with a lot of details. Until then, um, I'll be back with another video in two weeks from now. I have um, more surprises, I, I got some, one more package from, from Uruguay, but I'm gonna talk about it in the next video just because I don't have it with me right now, but um, yeah, a lot of surprises and a lot of things to build. I just need uh, free time and I don't seem to have much of that, so I, I apologize if I'm uh, late with the videos, but um, yeah, I'm trying my best to record and build and post some videos but I don't always have as much as free time as I wish I had but anyway um, until two weeks from now I'll try to come back in the weekend with one or two more articles on the blog meanwhile I'm also uh, working to post some more stuff on my sailing blog and the uh, YouTube channel because uh, a lot of the older subscribers that I used to have um, before I deleted my selling channel by mistake um, they're requesting the videos to be back so I'm working on that and uh, yeah <laughs> a little bit busy but I'm trying to um, somehow um, take care of everything so anyway thank you for watching um, 73 and uh, until the next video, have a great weekend and I'll see you soon.